And now uh, I would like to uh, talk about uh, today's uh, the selection for the day, and that is Uttam Brahmacharya. So I'll be taking at least 10 minutes to talk about uh, Uttam Brahmacharya, and then we'll have the question answer session. And during the question answer session, we'll have a lot more learning. So uh, today is the 10th day of uh, the selection, and it is Uttama Brahmacharya. So the word Uttama uh, refers to Samyak Darshan Samyagya. Uttama in English means supreme, and Brahmacharya means celibacy. So supreme celibacy. But uh, when you look at the word celibacy, you, you just understand that it is refraining from sensual activity, sexual activities. But Brahmacharya has a deeper connotation. And I would like to uh, write something on the board and request you to kindly note it down if you're really keen to know about this subject. Uh, if I can share the whiteboard. Yeah, please, please, I request you to kindly note down these things. It will be good for all of us. So the word Brahma, if you split the word Brahmacharya, you get it like this. Brahma plus Charya. Now this Brahma has three connotations and Charya has three connotations. So the first one is Brahma refers to Atma, Atma. And Charya refers to Raman, Atma Raman. That is uh, absorption in the pure soul. Absorption in the pure self that we are. That is Brahmacharya. Second, how do we do this? Through Vidya Adhyayana. That is through scriptural study. So Vidya Adhyayana, scriptural study also is a part of Brahmacharya. And then what happens is Virya Rakshan. Virya means all our energy and we protect our energy. We don't allow it to get diluted with mundane affairs. So Virya Rakshan. Okay. So first I told you Atma Raman is absorption in the pure soul. And how do you do that? Through scriptural study that is Vidya Adhyayana. And when you take to this, you take to self-restraint and your energy is not drained out in material affairs. So Brahmacharya does not refer to just abstinence from uh, sexual activities. It also means abstinence, complete abstinence from sensual and sexual activities. So you can say Vishe and Kashai. Okay, so just as a tortoise uh, withdraws its limbs inside and it protects itself from all the dangers outside. So we have a very beautiful example of uh, two kurma in the Gyata Dharm Katha Sutra. So the story goes like this, that uh, uh, in, in Banaras, there was a very big, uh, uh, what to say, the woods, you know, woods, uh, jungle type. And uh, there the two tortoise lived in the, in the waters over there. In the, in the deep woods, there were lakes. And in one of the lakes, the two tortoise lived. And in the woods lived two papi sial, that is two uh, wolves who were uh, very fond of eating flesh. And they were always searching for flesh and blood. And so these two kind of uh, uh, papi sial, they call him them, you know, the two, kind, uh, the two wolves, they were living there. So once it so happened that these two tortoise came out of the... Uh, uh, out of the pond and they were roaming in the deep woods and that is when these two wolves uh, see them and these tortoise also see them seeing them and what do they both do they withdraw all their limbs inside their two hands two legs and their face their neck they put it in the shell and uh, these wolves wait for a very long time uh, for these uh, tortoises to bring out their limbs so that they can attack them and have uh, and uh, treat themselves on the flesh of the tortoises. But one tortoise is uh, not very smart and uh, he's not very patient. He's not mastered his self or he's not mastered the brahmacharya, self-restraint. And so when these wolves go away they, and there they go far and they wait to see that these two tortoises come out of their shells. And uh, one uh, tortoise is not smart and he first removes his one hand and these wolves are very alert and they come and they attack him and they eat away his hand. Then that, then again it goes on, you know, there's a lot of description about this in the Gyata Dharam Katha Sutra. 
and then uh, again they go away and again this tortoise removes the other hand and then the other leg and then the other neck and one by one one by one they come again and again and eat away the tortoise but the other tortoise waits patiently endlessly he waits uh, for the danger to uh, vanish and then he first removes his neck not even his neck he just removes his face first he sees here and there he examines very quickly if there is any danger and then when he sees that when he senses that there's no danger the wolves have gone he he brings out his neck and all his hands and legs and quickly he runs away to the uh, lake where he lived so this example is given uh, for not not to explain the uh, nature of the tortoise and the wolf but if you take the gyata dharma katha sutra it is told that the first tortoise is like a papa shraman the so called munis and uh, uh, sadhus and sadvis and shravak and shravika who don't have self control who have no wisdom and they are allowing their senses to rule them and they are eaten away by the karma eaten away means they are uh, what to say their peace is eaten away by the uh, uh, karma they they are the wolves and then the second tortoise is the uh, samyak drishti sadhu sadvi shravak shravika the jain practitioners who are having the right vision so they are like the second tortoise who are extremely patient extremely smart extremely wise and extremely they have uh, the uh, control over their senses and the mind and they remain in their shells and they never come out of it and even if they have to come out they they are very alert and careful about the activities they do about the karmas they invite so uh, the, the, this message is uh, told in an analogical form of the two tortoises so you can read the gyata dharma katha sutra it's a beautiful text with almost 15 16 stories you know beautiful stories over there so if i can start i will uh, tell you more things but then i know what i have to do so i'll just uh, confine myself uh, to the topic so now i hope you understand that self restraint without self restraint nobody can follow brahmacharya and mere self restraint is not going to be uttama brahmacharya so that self restraint should be preceded by right understanding of reality that is samyak darshan samyak gyan only then the brahmacharya that you follow will come under the category of samyak charitra otherwise it is charitra but it is it cannot beget moksha it can get you good karma it can get you uh, stay in the higher existences of devalok eventually but not liberation so for liberation it should be uttama brahmachari la i am i am reminded of arjun uh, when uh, dronacharya was teaching all the kauravas and pandavas archery and he was asking them to aim then he asked all of them what is it that you see he wanted everybody to hit the uh, eye the eyeball of the eye of the bird sitting on that huge tree and when everybody came one by one he asked them what is it that you see then somebody said i see the tree somebody said i see you gurudev somebody said i see the bird etc 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 but when arjun came he said i don't see anything other than the eye ball of that bird so and that much focused he was so he was a great archer so likewise when we have the focus one pointed focus of the eternal pure self only then we can realize it only then we can purify it and only then we can conquer it and become the masters of the self and only those who are the masters of the self will be the masters of the universe in the jain tradition so we see that uh, in jainism uh, we have the five indriya the karm, uh, in in vedant they have the five karma indriya and the five uh, uh, what to say uh, the bhoga indriya so the five senses come under by which you enjoy the material pleasures they are the bhog indriya and then the karma indriya are the your motor organs your act your hands and legs etc they come under karma indriya but in jainism we don't have this karma indriya and uh, uh, concept they say that out of the five sense organs two are karma indriya 
and three are bhogendriya. Indriya means sense organs. Kama means merely looking at it or merely hearing about it, your senses are aroused. Okay, so the ears and the eyes come under Kama Indriya. And the other three, the lower three, the nose, the tongue and the touch. For this, the sense object have to come in contact. Okay, then only the bhog will start. Then only the enjoyment of it will start. So these lower three are just the bhogendriya and the top two are the kamendriya. Mere listening to it, you want to have it or you want to get it or you want to enjoy it. So when you want it, this want, this desire is the root cause of all karma. And from where does the desire spring? It springs from ignorance. It springs from disinterest in the self. Disinterest in the eternal pure self. So Atma is Brahmacharya Swarupa. Atma is divine. Atma is like Siddha Bhagavan. Atma is pure consciousness. But this consciousness is not interested in the consciousness and it is interested in whatever it is conscious about. So that is called Gyeyo. Gyeyo me it is interested. It is not interested in Gyan. Okay, so to, to make it interested in its own self, we have all the Jain festivities. So whether it is Mahavir uh, Kalyanak or whether it is uh, Nirvan Kalyanak of Bhagwan, whether it is Parshnath Kalyanak, all Jain festival days are meant for uh, retreating in the soul. It's a spiritual retreat, all Jain festivals. So likewise, we have the Paryushan and the Dasalakshan, the Chaturmas. All these periods are the time when we should rejoice being in the self. Only when we rejoice being in the self through Samyak Darshan Gyan Charitra, only then we will tap the infinite inherent potential that is there in us and manifest it. And if we don't manifest it, we will continue to uh, remain in the cycle of transmigration. So not just one, there are thousands of Jain texts and scriptures which talk about it. The great legendary Acharyas have written beautiful things about uh, uh, all this Dasalakshan and uh, 12 Bhavanas and Ratna Tre. So it goes on and on. So uh, there's one very beautiful quote, you know, which says, Jhuta hai sansar, ankh khol kar dekho. And the second line says, Sacha hai atma, aankh band karke dekho. That means what? Open your eyes and see that how uh, fake or the how the world, the mundane world is full of uh, false promises and uh, uh, illusion and delusion and all that. And then the second line says, close your eyes and see that how true yourself is. That is why you see all the Tirthankar images. They, their eyes are semi-closed or uh, semi-opened and they are having the Nashagra Drishti and they are looking at their own self and they are telling us silently, come unto thyself, know thyself. But you know, we have a little nose on our face, but we don't see this nose. These eyes open up to the world and we are seeing everything outside. Whereas Bhagwan Atma is so near to our own self, nearer to the nose that we have, but we don't see it so near, you know, we don't have that insight. We don't have that far sight. We don't have that foresight. So that sight, you know, is Mithyatva. And because of that, only the Abrahmacharya we are into. And that causes all the uh, problem. Now, the Shastra also talk about external and internal forms of Brahmacharya. So external is control of the senses and the mind. And internal is absorption in the self. Mere external will not liberate us. And mere internal without the external also will not live. It. Both have to go hand in hand. And this has been demonstrated uh, by all our Tirthankas. The, they understood the soul first, the, inter, the value of internal Brahmacharya. They internalized the Jain philosophy. And then they went to the forest and took to the external ways of Brahmacharya to perfect the internal one. So mere external forms of Brahmacharya is not brahmacharya, but it is for a purpose of internalizing the self. When you internalize the self, there will be a dynamite, there will be a revolution in the soul. And that is when 
uh, that uh, dynamite will uh, clear all the karma, karmic bondage and clear all the heaps of karma and what happens is enlightenment or keval gyan or moksha. So uh, uh, we all are upasak of Vitaragi. We all are devotees of those who have conquered raga dvesha, those who have conquered attachment and aversion. So they are Vitarag, they are beyond attachment and aversion. And so a practitioner of the Vitarag, a follower of Vitarag Bhagwan, will believe in Vitaragata. He knows the methodology of Vitaragata. He knows how to go beyond attachment and aversion, even though he may be taking to it because of his karma, karmic uday. Okay, friends. So uh, these are the few things that I wanted to tell you about uh, Uttam Brahmacharya. Uh, 